Hello and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. Okay, in episode 65, we got the molds finished over here. So in episode 66, we're going to get those molds loaded and we're going to make carbon fiber doors. Okay, I'd, li I'd like to just uh, give a special thanks to Composite Envisions once again for sponsoring this part of the build. Uh, this is the first time I've had any uh, channel sponsorship, so super happy to have them along for the ride. Uh, all the products that I've used uh, from Composited Visions are listed in the description. And uh, hey, they supported me. If you could support them, that would be much appreciated. We're now going to move on to the most important component for making carbon fiber parts, and that's getting your release agent set up on your mold. So first of all, these molds, again, are only a few weeks old. Uh, so it's necessary to seal them. So normally, I mean, in, a, in a, an ideal scenario, you would let your mold sit for you know a couple of weeks, up to a month, something like that, in order to get all of the styrene and other things that are in the mold off gassed and make sure that they're no longer uh, like they're fully cured and fully aged. Uh, in the absence of that, I, I'm not really pressed for time. I just kind of like moving along. Uh, but you can use, uh, in this case, I'm using Free Coat uh, FMS. Right, so that's a mold sealer. So that's been applied again in a strict schedule. And then I follow up the application of the mold sealer with uh, the 700 NC release agent. All right, so the release agent uh, gets applied in exactly the same schedule, north, south, east, west, and then 45 and 45. Uh, right as soon as it flashes, you take a clean microfiber cloth and you wipe it off. Just You just pass it over the surface. You don't polish it. You just very easily, just gently go over the surface and you're done. Okay, so don't go crazy with it. Simply apply it. Now, the only other rule that I've learned for the application, which is really quite important, is you're going to put the product on in non-overlapping strokes. So you're not going to rub it in. You're just going to you're just going to put the product on and wipe in a single direction every time. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you how that all works. Okay, so I've already sealed this mold, so I don't need to go over that step. Uh, and you can see that I've wet sanded the mold. Uh, in this case, I've just taken it to 1,000 grit wet. I didn't really see any need to go any further than that. Uh, and this, as it's a, a black gel coat surface, it's reasonably difficult uh, to pick it up on camera. So everything here, uh, I'll, I'm doing the best I can to show you all the details here. Okay, so gloves on, right, for sure. The cap somewhere where you'll lose it. <clears throat> now you don't want to put the release agent where you're going to apply uh, the bag sealing tape for those doing resin infusions because uh, it will not allow the uh, tape to adhere properly to the mold surface. Now I know that normally uh, when I'm laying up the mold the fabrics are going to go outside of the mold area so I want to apply my release agent outside of that mold area where I know that the materials are going to be applied. Okay, so then very carefully wet it out here. Some of these detail areas, uh, you can spend a little bit of time there. And parts of the mold, sometimes you can't do the whole mold in these sort of perfect schedules for application. But I found that, you know, in some of the areas it's not possible if they're really small or whatever to get it in. Uh, going in different directions all the time. But I have found that it's not really a problem. What we're trying to do with the different directions for the application is avoid areas where the product is not actually being applied to the mold surface. Okay, because there can be small scratches and things on the mold surface. And you want to make sure that all of them have been coated. Okay, so I'm just very carefully, always in the same direction applying it until I get it fully wet. I normally would apply it a little bit quicker than this, but you're watching, so it's tough to do both things at once.
All right, so one of the fun parts of doing these sorts of things is that you have to make a lot of patterns. So again, I don't know how everyone else does this because not all the videos that I've watched actually have a whole ton of detail in them, right? They're, uh, you know, magically things appear and disappear. So I, I tend to show maybe a, a little more of that. Uh, you can always fast forward if you don't want to watch the details. But um, here's the, the first part I'm going to make is a pattern for the core. So I've just got some brown paper pattern. I'm cutting it to the inside of the mold. And then up comes the door and I'm going to pull the hinges off. And then uh, the hinges are actually quite stiff. So I'm mixing a little bit of acetone and ATF. And if you've never done that, it's the best penetrant you can uh, you can buy for cheap. Throw it in a bag and I'll uh, I'll pull that nonsense out later. Now, I'm just making an edge pattern, right? So that foam core has to go in behind this. Well, the uh, the behind part of this door is a complicated shape. So just using a little bit of masking tape to pull the shape out of there, just cutting neatly around it. I put two layers of masking tape down when I do this just to make it stiff enough and have it hold together properly. So, you know, you make it nice and stiff and you have a good look at what you need. So you can see there as I'm developing the shape with the masking tape, the kind of detailed shape that I need to get around the hinge areas and the, the catch area here on this side of the door. And then you just carefully remove these parts and uh, back onto the mold we go. Then I put them onto that paper pattern and then I'm going to carefully measure, in this case I'm using about 30 or 40 millimeters around the edge to give myself a nice border so that I know that the foam core is going to fit in behind uh, this part reliably without uh, without running into things hopefully anyway so fingers crossed and then for each one of the uh, the holes in the middle where the trim goes in I need to make uh, a little cutout because I don't want the foam core you know I, I don't need the foam core there I just want to have the carbon fiber and other materials there and then in this case you can see I'm just using this uh, it's just a piece of white coroplast that corrugated plastic uh, as a straight edge, but I'm using it to figure out where the foam core will and won't bend. All right, so it won't go up around that corner. I'm using this quarter inch, six point whatever, two mil micell foam, and it, it doesn't bend. It's a rigid foam, so it doesn't bend. So I'm just using that coroplast to simulate that. All right, so now that I've got a pretty good idea where everything is going to go, I just get everything masked off because we're going to be priming again here. So just a little masking paper around the edge again. The uh, the old green tape won't stick to the, the covered mold, um, but that tan colored tape sure does. Anyway, so a couple of good coats here. You could actually see the funny part. I, I'd stuck the camera on the roof and the overspray got on the camera. So for the rest of this, you're going to, well, until I figured it out, until I got the camera cleaned. Uh, and when you do use that primer, pull your masking off immediately after you get your last coat on. Do not let the primer dry uh, or else it'll actually, it'll tear. So uh, you have to pull it off right away. Now another pattern gets made and this pattern is for the fabric, right? So that I know where the fabric's going to go. Then I'm going to use those patterns. Here's the micelle 6.2 mil, 6.4 mil foam. Uh, and we're going to, you know, put it in. We're doing the same pattern that we've done before for the whole, so inch and a half. So out comes the two by two. And I draw up the uh, entire pattern. I've put them both on the same way. That's fine because we're just going to flip one end for end when we put it in. Uh, cut them off, get the edges uh, cut out, and then start drilling holes. Uh, how much fun is this? Not. Anyway, drill about a million holes. Uh, get them all cleared. Now, spend your time making sure that those holes are 100% clear. No use doing it any other way. This adds a little bit of weight to the door itself, right? Both The, the foam doesn't really absorb uh, any epoxy, but the holes will fill. Uh, and then you round the edges so that you don't get any bridging and you carefully sand the whole thing up. Now next up is a material I've never used before. So once we get the edges all sanded up, is a new material to handle the area on the door where the door curves. Ah uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, share it with a friend, hey? You know, can always use. You can still see that I'm kind of foggy as we're looking through there. I figured out that we're foggy, so I fixed the camera. Now I'm using the top side of the mold, and this is Divinimat. So it's the same idea. It's a closed cell foam, but on the back of it's like a scrim cloth that holds it together, and it's flexible. All right, so up you can see it just pops into the mold. Now I'm going to work on the shape a little bit and cut it in. I don't want it bridging over the top or creating any other weirdness. 
Okay, we're getting ready to load the first mold. Uh, this is gonna get very tight in here. I'm completely out of space, but I'm gonna do the very best that I can to try to at least show you how I've got this uh, this planned. The idea is to load one of the molds and then sort of push it actually towards where you are now. Load the second mold and then get the vacuum infusion done. So um, I just wanted to point out the material that we're using. Uh, so for all of the people who don't understand why sometimes I use material they've never heard of before, uh, this one's just a standard 2x2 two two twill. Uh, in fact, as these are paint quality, uh, they're all being painted. This is not a carbon fiber look, carbon fiber project. Uh, this is a carbon fiber project. Um, so we're just using a second quality which has some error in the weave that I can't detect. Uh, anyway, so this is all, it's a little bit bargain basement in terms of price. Um, but the quality of the material, it doesn't matter. Uh, the strength of the mold and it's a painted part, so all good. Anyway, so let's get it unwrapped and get a roll in here. Top tip, the tags that come on these products from uh, Composite Envisions actually come straight off. If you just peel up an edge, they peel right off the plastic really easily, and then you won't forget what the materials are. I mean, maybe you're not like me and, and uh, maybe you don't forget everything, but I'll, I'll forget what this material is uh, in a week. So that way I can take it off, I don't have to damage the label that sticks the plastic down, and I'll remember what it is later. Okay, so to adhere the carbon fiber uh, material into the mold, we're going to use uh, FiberTac MT1. All right, so this uh, is a, it's a, it's just a spray on glue. Uh, you mist it on, you don't, you're not trying to make a full coverage here. You're just gonna mist it uh, onto the mold and onto the fabric and you can lay the fabric in and it's got more than enough hold to get the fabric placed. You need to be able to push the fabric down into all the corners and nooks and crannies. You can't just loose drape it in and then think that the vacuum is going to pull things down tightly. You'll get bridging problems and other issues. So I use the, uh, the MT1 for just the fabric. <sighs> so much dust. Um, and I've been using 3M Super 77 to adhere in the other material. So the foam core that's gonna go in, uh, the fiber tack is just a little bit, uh, it's not super sticky, which is what you want. Uh, this is super sticky. It would be, um, anyways, and this is what you want if you've got a foam core going in. So super 77. Here's another tip. So when this material was pulled off the roll, it would have been taped straight, right? If you wanna get your weave to be straight, Pull that tape back to straight. Stuff moves around a lot. Carbon fiber that is. It moves around quite a bit. And I don't care a whole lot about having my weave straight. It doesn't really matter for strength. But as with everything, I'm always trying to push uh, what I can do to improve my technique. So for any of you that are trying to make parts that, uh, that you're actually going for an exposed weave, this is, this is critical. I have no idea how anyone has the patience to do that actually. I suffer just straightening out a tape line. Okay, so the next step is actually going to be to get a weight for this fabric before I put it into the mold. All right, so off to the scale we go to get it weighed. Okay, so that fabric weighed out at 261 grams, so I'm gonna write that on the whiteboard, uh, get it put into the mold, and then I will be uh, taking all the remnants that I cut off of this as I load the mold, and uh, just subtracting the weights. And I keep track of the weights as I'm going. It's really important when you do the final, um, final evaluation as you're getting your epoxy ready to go that you have to know the material weight in the mold. You can't be guessing at this. This is, uh, you have to use measurements to get these right. Okay, it's time to get the fabric laid into the mold. So I actually like this part. I don't mind this part at all. So the fabric goes in pretty easily. I understand now why people like this two by two twill. Super simple, easy to work with. Uh, anyway, the blue Bondo spreader is out uh, again. You gotta press this stuff hard into the mold, make sure it's there correctly. And I'm being super careful getting the lay nice and straight, uh, cutting off the remnants to weigh them up later. 
and uh, then getting all the edges tacked in so I'm happy. Now, for those that are interested in actually doing this, the reason that I've selected to use uh, four layers of carbon fiber on this particular project uh, was simply I was trying to match the thickness of the existing 18-gauge uh, panel uh, that's on the car. Actually, I think it's 19 gauge, but I've got a specific thickness that I'm trying to hit and I've used the online calculators to measure that up and then I'll hit that thickness. So rinse and repeat here uh, in terms of what's going on with the fabric for the second layer as this goes in. So uh, super easy again, uh, uh, just pressing it in, working the areas that are going to be hard first and then going on to the areas that are easy. Okay, so the next layer of fabric that's going in is an Aramid product, so it's basically a Kevlar. It is black in color, but again, uh, I was economizing on the price, and this is another second quality material. Uh, it doesn't affect the material's properties, just the cost, right? So the weave isn't perfect. Uh, anyway, you do need special scissors in order to cut uh, Kevlar. I have a pair of scissors. These are both, again, available at Composite Envisions. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive, and boy, do they ever work good. Uh, so the pair that has all the black nasties on it, uh, I've been using that for everything. Uh, and this is a brand spanking new pair that I have only to cut the Kevlar. So we'll cut the Kevlar up, we'll put it in, but we're going to have to take a few extra steps with the Kevlar. We don't want to be running the Kevlar all the way out uh, over top of the edge uh, of the material. I put two layers of the uh, two by two twill uh, carbon fiber down and then before the foam core we're going to put the Kevlar in so that the Kevlar is on the outside and the idea is uh, impact resistance like if there is ever a side impact on the car the idea is the Kevlar is there to sort of keep things together but I don't want to have it out towards the edge I don't want to have it over top of other things uh, you can't I have to cut holes uh, for the trim through the Kevlar before I bond it because once it's all done its thing with the uh, epoxy resin, there won't be any cutting this without special tools. So uh, we're going to try to take care of all of those needs ahead of time. And I may not be putting it uh, sort of everywhere, but uh, I'm putting it in the areas where it's needed. Let's get to work. All right, it's a little bit weird to work with actually. So I, I only need it on the bottom side of the door skin. The tape would not stick to it. I tried every kind of tape that I have and unless it's that blue painter's tape and I don't have any of that, uh, I could not get this uh, thing to tape up. So live and learn. Anyway, uh, placing it in and then again, we don't want to deal with things that are going to fuzz or problems or whatever. So I'm really carefully checking where I'm putting the pattern even though I put it in upside down the first time. Then I'm using a, a paint marker to just mark it off and you saw me just dust the top of it there with the glue that's to help hold it together so as I'm cutting it the little bit of glue that I just dusted on there actually holds the fabric together so I'm cutting out around each one of the holes where the trim uh, screws and things are going to go or trim you know the trim parts go and then I'm cutting around that door handle because I have to get in there and I don't want to deal with it like I don't want it fraying or fuzzing and then I don't need it around the edge I mean I've I've, I've got a material thickness that I'm trying to hit and the Kevlar layer, although very light and quite thin, uh, is not going to help. So I got to get it out of there. So you pull it out and then back we go. The, mold, the, uh, the, the core has gone in and then the last two layers of carbon fiber are going to go on here pretty quick. So we get those pushed in again. Now you've got the extra complexity of uh, layers and stacking and, and uh, release or um, foam core to deal with, with different heights. So you really do have to work this. This did take quite a bit longer. I've cut a lot of this out uh, just to get it in and around the edge. Nice, same deal as always though, right? Keep those remnants, weigh them up, final stack weight. Uh, and then this mold was different than every other mold. Uh, there was an error. I, I've lost the footage, but you can now see I've got a big dent in it there. Um, and a friend of mine looked at some photos on Instagram and then uh, texted me right away and said, hey, I don't think that's going to fit in the door. Uh, there's a cable retract system for <laughs> the window and the uh, it comes close to the to the panel and I hadn't accounted for that. So... I quickly peeled the carbon fiber back and fixed it actually at night and then went out and, and finished it off. So, all right, peel ply goes in. What have I learned about peel ply in the time that I've done this? Uh, tailor it to the fabric. Don't let the peel ply sit up loosely. You want to get it in and tucked in and glued down where you need it. 
Uh, the red flow mesh, I've only got a little bit of this left. Again, we're sort of locked down in Canada at the moment. If you're watching this in the future, this was all being done during the COVID-19 outbreak of, uh, of 2020. Right, so back with the one inch tape that I always use, one inch tacky tape to do the the, uh, the lines in and out of the mold. I just find it works best. And then the uh, AirTech uh, 800 um, stretch lawn, I should say, 800 uh, bagging material. L notice how big this bag looks. Like it looks huge. Uh, this is the bare minimum. So it's a bizarre thing to actually have to work <laughs> these bags. So the tacky tape goes in. And then I'm putting the pleats in. Now, what I've learned about the pleats over time is the pleats represent areas of increased pressure. So you, you don't put them in randomly. Other videos are just indicating that, well, you just put the pleats in until the area of the, of the bag or the perimeter of the bag matches the perimeter of the mold. It's a little bit too simple. So in, in areas like at the top of this mold where I have that, uh, the section that I'm going to cut out later to join to the rest of the panel, um, right there where my hand is, I need a, a pleat right there so that I will get pressure going across that part of the mold to hold the bag into that place. Now, I guess you could do it in any number of ways, but I know if I place my pleats properly, it's a lot of peas there, it's going to be all right. Okay, so in we go, a little bit of release agent into my brand new uh, catch pot, and then on goes the vacuum, so you can see how that works. Now watch as I release the vacuum here. So the bag's going in for the first time there. Release the vacuum, tighten it up. Move the bag around. Release the vacuum, tighten it up, right? Move the bag. All right, so it's the next day. The bag has now been uh, under vacuum here for, at this point, about 20 hours. So I'm gonna call this bag sealed. <laughs> it's not lost uh, any of the, the uh, vacuum that's under it. There are a couple issues and I just thought I'd point them out so as we're uh, putting the applying the vacuum to the to the part, we want to watch for especially these little internal curves. So I can see here that I've got a little bit of bridging. Now all that's happened is the red mesh, uh, which is the flow medium, has in essence clamped to the top before it clamped into this corner. Uh, it's not as bad here. But over here, you can see the radius is pretty big. So when I see that kind of thing, and you can feel it, like you can just push on it, and you can feel that it's not tight up against the mold. All I have to do is release the vacuum here, adjust the mesh, and then everything else is good. So I'll carefully check all these areas of the mold uh, and make sure everything is fine. And the good news is, what I have to be able to do, folks, uh, is this particular mold, uh, has to go under vacuum, right? So we'll infuse it and then I need to be able to shove it just down here Beside the car like where the lights and where the everything else is. I'm just gonna shove it down the way uh, Then I have to get the other mold Which is this mold loaded and ready to go. So that's the uh, this is the space I'm dealing with so if you think you can't do this in a small space um, that's my total space. That's <laughs> so I'll get this done. Oh, and then I've changed one thing so you can see my new catch pot. Um, there'll be a separate video on on making that when I get to. Uh, well, hopefully I'll get to it right away. But I've changed one thing with it. So uh, actually, when I made my first order to Composite Envisions, I ordered their fancy version of the vacuum connector. And get it to focus which includes those two components right so this has been under vacuum you can see the ball valve is open that's been sitting for 24 hours I can also plug it straight in and I'll lose nothing now before I got that I was just using a standard airline quick connect and with this particular mold uh, I was having some problems I was thinking that I thought the mold was leaking and in fact it was this fitting so there was the little rubber gasket on the inside of this fitting that was leaking. Right. So then I thought, well, I did buy these. I was just kind of lazy and didn't change them. So I put them in. So far, super impressed with that particular part. Okay, so we're back using that ProSet INF114 is the uh, epoxy of choice for this, for this project. I've got the amount weighed up. 
and the uh, the amount was quite a bit different. Uh, the ratio that I needed to get this to work was uh, about two to one. Uh, it's because of the cores and other things in here, as well as the shape of the mold. It just was one of the more awkward uh, sorts of numbers that I had to pull to get this uh, this thing infused. So you can see me mixing it quite carefully. Again, I cut that out. You've got lots of time, right? So you got yeah, hours that you can mix this stuff, but do be careful with it in the pot. You can see that that pot was pretty full. And I did learn a lesson on the second door actually, as the infusion went pretty slowly and I had the epoxy go off in the pot. So <laughs> it goes off by mass. All right, that one's done. So you can see it's all unplugged and the catch pot's just tossed on the top of it. And we get rolling, loading the next one. I'm absolutely out of room. This was so frustrating to do. I kept bashing into stuff the entire time I was doing this. It's the exact same schedule, folks. So uh, how about we just turn some music on and listen to that? There's nothing else special with this one. So the molds have now been sitting for 24 hours and it's time to uh, get the bagging materials off and see how this all worked out. Uh, but first, the most satisfying moment in all vacuum infusion. Cutting the vacuum line. Oh, my mic picks this up. I just love that part. so far so good look at this there's bright and sharp as diamonds Getting there, folks, getting there. We're popped. It's going to be just up in this area here at the top of that door that's going to be uh, not causing problems. It's just going to stick a little bit, right? So there we go. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, if you can't enjoy getting stuff out of molds, then like you just hear it pop and then you're like, oh, there we go. Come on, come on. Be good, it's all anyone's asking. Oh yeah. That, my friends, thing of beauty. Look at that. How awesome is that? Okay, color me happy. Oh, there we go. Look at that, I think you could stand on this. Let's not though. You know, it's not that kind of show. Oh, baby. 
That looks great. So happy. Okay, door number one, done. That's just about in real time. So in case, I'm gonna cut all this out. Uh, that's about 10 minutes or so. That's amazing for me. I don't think we're gonna have any trouble with this one releasing. It's already pulling out of the mold. Okay, at the start of the video, I covered uh, in great detail how we uh, properly apply the release agent. Follow that. There's always one side. Why has it got to be you? See, this is all that just came up from taking the peel ply off of it. Neat. Look at that. No worries. I don't want to get too cute here. And I'm wishing I had. There it is. There it is. Can you hear that? I don't know if the mic will pick that up. These are just the nicest parts that I've had. I've made a few parts too. There it is. Like just butter. Absolute butter. Never had a part release better than that. Shut up, don't say those things. God, incurring the wrath of the parts gods. Just heard it pop and then just there it is, guys. So, guys and gals, we're like guys and my mom. Hi mom. I haven't had a shout out to my mom yet. She sometimes watches the channel. Hi mom. Oh, ah. just give you a quick look around. Like I'm not seeing anything for surface flaws on this either. These are so nice. Like all the details pulled. You can see how nice and flat it is. Camera's having a hard time focusing. Don't go all AVE on you and swear. There you go. And for all the, why don't you guys do carbon fiber look guys? There you go. You'll see there's nothing wrong with the processor technique. You know, gosh, that's nice. Boy, that's good. It always has this ring, like there's a resonance to it. That is a good looking part. Okay, so that's going to be a wrap for episode 66. In episode 67, we're going to have a look at how we get these bonded to the car doors uh, by repairing the car doors first. So I have no idea if I'm going to get it all done in one episode, but we're going to give it a try. Anyway, thanks for coming along. I really do appreciate the, um, the views and the support. Uh, stay safe out there, folks. Crazy time. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Oh, one last thing. If I gotta give my car door CPR, it's never gonna move. Okay, that's good. It's a wrap. Catch you on the next one.